I, I've had to close my, to turn off my camera a couple of times to wipe the tears away. But um, I just want to let you know how important this is to to the world. You know, um, Tony, um, I'm <clears throat> I'm a retired lieutenant detective commander from the New York City Police Department, and um, white supremacy has been infiltrating police departments across this country, it's been invading our military. Um, and I've seen it and I've had to deal with it and it's, it's growing and, and it's not, it's not so, su it's not subtle anymore. Police officers are getting tattoos, you know, indicating that they are still, they, they're a part of white supremacist groups. They're making white, white supremacist signs in the, pu in, the in publicly doing this, these things. When you have an administration, federal administration, and also in, in, in the New York City Police Department, we have the top levels of, 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 of the police department that say that they don't believe that there's any uh, uh, you know, systemic racism going on here. And it's just so frustrating to bump your head against the, you know, because I've been, I've been work, trying to work on this for a very long time. And so I said, well, you know, if you're not going to acknowledge it as a thing and work on it, uh, and, 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 you know, we have to do something. So I've tried to, uh, to put out there that they should be asking recruits, uh, they should be doing a polygraph for every single person that wants to become a police officer. Have you ever been a part of, have you ever advocated for a, an organization that, that espouses hate for anybody because of their race, creed, color, you know, or sexual, sexual orientation? Am I, is that the wrong approach? Because uh, I couldn't, you know, I'm saying if they're not gonna acknowledge, you know, that, uh, and, and do it on, a, on an intellectual, you know, realm. Well, let's just get down to bear tech. If you come in and do a lie detector test, you know, what do you think about that? Um, there's two pieces of that question. I mean, first of all, we, we need to call people out in a healthy way, but we also need to prepare, be prepared to call people in. And I, I fear that, that to have the discussion of, of white supremacy, systemic racism, you know, absolutely, it, it exists, but it be it's become so politicized that the politics of it prevent people from looking at it um, properly. So it's it's how to diffuse that situation. Um, let me ask you: Do you, do you ask recruits um, if they've ever been gangsters or ever been part of the mafia or or whatever? I'm sure they do. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you add these? To, you know, the they don't police? think it exists, Tony. They don't think it it's a thing. Yeah, no, and that's the, that's the that's the challenge. I mean, and there's again, we get into the this there's the systemic racism and whether they can wrap their brain around it. The fact is, people are joining the military. Uh, joining the military, I joined the military in the '90s just to get the weapons training and the tactical training. Um, I encouraged other people publicly go get go get the training. Uh, don't tell anyone. Just go get it. Get your training. Get out. And and um, you know, Vancouver Police Department, for example. Um, they do. Every person has to take a, a lie detector test and they're asked about gang affiliations, they're asked about drug use, they're asked about a whole, a whole slew of, of character questions um, to determine whether or not they're, they're eligible for the Vancouver Police Department. So those tougher screening methods, um, I think, um, absolutely they're 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 called for so let me just say one thing that should we be excluding them or should we accept everyone and try to and, and and this is one of the things that i want that a couple of people had asked how do you ramp this up so that i mean you it's hard to hate up close and personal one-on-one -on -one. it's hard to do that but how do you ramp this up to the thousands of people that are in, in already in the police departments that need to hear your you know, you're, you're need to be able to relate to yours. You have, you have a certain, um, uh, into, you had a certain intellectual inquisitiveness. I, I, I'm seeing that allowed you to be able to, to move from one place to another. Not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. So how do you do that on a large scale basis in a, with a police department? I'm trying my best to work with, with the NYPD to figure out how to, how to solve this, you know, in training or whatever, but it's been very, it's been very difficult. Very, very difficult. Well, maybe you and I should should talk after because I've I've been asked to think about how to provide a training through the University of Southern California to address those issues. Yes. Um, 
you know, they, they get professional credits and it's, it, it's, they get a certificate and all of that kind of thing. So I'd love to talk to you about, about doing that. I would love um, to talk to you also. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not with life after hate anymore. I left at Christmas to pursue other opportunities, but you know, life after hate provided proof of concept that we can, we can affect profoundly change people and, and help them come back from that world. And, but life after hate as a group of formers, there's no way it could ever scale um, to the, to, to the size it would need to be to um, confront the challenge uh, in America. Um, but what we did is we look, so we've got this proof of concept. Now, can we teach and train others who don't have that experience? Can we teach and train social workers? Should police officers have some of this training? Uh, and in San Diego, we were looking at um, working with the, the San Diego County and their department. They've got 50 social workers that go out and, and ride along or on patrol with police officers. They're the, they're the cold face that are gonna come across these individuals in, in, in the street and in encounters. How can we train them to make those encounters more productive, to help, make the, help those, make those encounters an opportunity to pull people out of out of that world and and so that's where our focus has has been but absolutely um that needs to then be turned to at a more institutional level and we should be talking about um how to do it with police departments and and, and such it's it's possible to do it but it's just finding the right mechanism to scale it all right tony i don't want to take up too much time i know there are a lot of people that want to ask questions but uh it, maybe we can go through the, the administrators of here and hook up, you know, and, and I'll give them a number to give you and you can give them a number to give to me. Absolutely. Is that, is that okay? Do yes, um, we will connect you. Absolutely, yeah. we'll, we'll make the connection. Thank you, thank you very much, appreciate no it. No problem.